In this video, I want to talk about fair dealing as one of the predominant exceptions to copyright infringement in Australia. So in Australia, an interaction with a particular copyright work or other subject matter does not infringe copyright if it is fair and if it is done for one of the listed purposes in the Copyright Act. The most common of these are research or study, criticism or review, reporting of news, the um, use for judicial proceedings or the giving of professional legal advice, and parody or satire, the newest of the exceptions. So starting first with research or study. These words are not defined in the Act. The ordinary dictionary meaning is used. Research on that meaning means a diligent and systematic inquiry or investigation into a subject in order to discover facts or principles. In determining whether a dealing is for the purpose of research or study, it's important to remember that the relevant person the relevant purpose, sorry, is that of the person making the dealing, not the purpose to which the reproduction or other use of copyright material is ultimately put. And we see this with some clarity in the federal court case of the Garris and Neville Jeffress Pidler. In that case, um, the defendants ran a press clipping service. So they would monitor the um, newspapers of the day to provide a service to copy the relevant stories to their, for their customers. Their customers were likely engaged in research or study. Their copying, if they'd carried it out themselves, would have qualified as an exception, or probably would have qualified as uh, an exception to copyright infringement because they were doing it for the purposes of their own research or study. The defendant, though, because they were operating a for-profit press clipping service, they couldn't rely on the defense of research or study because their ultimate purpose was to make a profit. It, they were copying not for their own research or study, but in order to be able to charge their clients for the services of copying. This is a fairly narrow reading of the law in Australia, which means that it makes it extremely difficult for third parties to rely on exceptions of infringement uh, to provide services for end users. In Canada, for example, the law is quite different. Uh, the leading Canadian case, CCH, provides that, um, or con sorry, concerned a um, library who was copying on behalf of its patrons. And in that case, the court held that the librarian's actions, the li library by copying the material, was a natural prerequisite to the research and study of its users. So if the users were to have an exercisable right to engage in research and study, then it naturally flowed that a third party could help them exercise that right and therefore rely on the exception under the Copyright Act. Uh, importantly, there are a couple of factual differences to that case. That re research library was a non-profit uh, library, the, but the court did take a very different approach to the Australian courts who have historically written, read down the operation of the fair dealing defences for use by third parties. There are, for research and study in particular, several statutory factors that the courts take into account. These are only present in the research and study exceptions, but they have been used by the courts as guides to help the interpretation of the other fair dealing exceptions. So you'll find these in 40 sub 2 and 103c sub 2 that and they um, provide a list of factors that the courts will take into account. And these are very similar, as we'll see later on, to the US fair use factors with one notable difference. So the courts, when evaluating whether a particular use is fair, take into account the purpose and the character of the use, the nature of the source material, Importantly, the possibility of obtaining the work or AV item within a reasonable time at an ordinary commercial price. That is to say, if there is a non-infringing commercial means to access the material that is needed for research and study, then that use, copying without obtaining a license commercially, is more likely to infringe copyright. 
The courts will also look on the effect of the copying on the market or the potential market for the work. And particularly where only dealing with a part three original work, um, where the adaptation or audiovisual item is reproduced or copied, they look, courts will look at the amount and substantiality of the part copied in relation to the whole in making an assessment of whether what was taken was taken fairly. The legislation also sets out a series of guidelines that apply for literary, musical and dramatic works in section 40. Uh, so particularly these are a set of assumptions about fairness. So for example, it is um, presumed to be fair to copy a um, to copy one article within a journal or other periodical. In all other cases, copying fairly is limited to a reasonable portion of material. Um, it's not a fair dealing to reproduce the whole or part of an article in a periodical or a journal if you're also reproducing another of the articles or um, in that same issue. And finally, there's a basic presumption that anything under 10% for research or study is permissible. Now, importantly, that doesn't mean that taking over 10% is prohibited. It just means that it has to be fair in the circumstances. But there is a, um, an, a presumption provided in the legislation that taking 10% or less of a part three literary, dramatic or musical work is, for the purposes of research or study will be fair. Importantly, it always must be for the purposes of research and study, however.